don't need me to build a temple to know that you love me still. Oh, oh. Like Israel on the shore, all I see is crashing waves. But like Israel on the shore, through the wild you make your way. Jesus, Jesus, there's just something about that name, Master, Savior. Like the fragrance after the rain Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Let all heaven and earth proclaim something Yes, there's something Oh, there's something About that name Jesus Jesus There's just something about that name Master, Savior, Jesus Like the fragrance after the rain Jesus, Jesus, my Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim, kings and kingdoms, they will There's something Yes, there's something Oh, there's something About that name Well, there's something Yes, there is something There's something about that name. Hey everyone, it's Jason, and I am so glad that you are here today. Happy New Year! 
We're going to worship together shortly, but before we do, let me share some announcements with you. We want to make sure that you are aware of some changes with our online giving. We are now exclusively using the Church Center app for online giving. There's an instructional video from Pastor Derek that you can view on how to get that set up at lafayettefirst.life slash why we give. You can also call the church office if you have any questions. We're also now using text to give as a way to give via text message. To get started, all you do is text any dollar amount to 84321 to give. You'll have a quick self-guided setup process that will tie your mobile phone to our church. Then you'll create a donor account and you connect it to a payment source. After that, donating is as easy as sending a text. Mark your calendars to be at Vision Night next Sunday at 5 p.m. Join us for some fun activities and finger foods as we look into the new year to see how God is moving here at Lafayette First. We want to see Lafayette First as a place to call home. And that night, we want your input and feedback as to how we can work together to make it that way. We hope to see you there. We want to let you know that Family Night Supper will resume on Wednesday, January 12th at 5.15 p.m. The cost is $5 per person with a family maximum of $20. And we ask that you make reservations each week so that we know how much food to prepare. On January 23rd, we have a very fun evening planned when we will hold the first annual Annex Games. That's right. Join us in the Annex at 5 p.m. for an evening of friendly competition and fellowship together. It's going to be fun, so make plans to be there. Finally, mark your calendars for Sunday, January 30th, as we will be serving Sunday supper at the Lafayette Housing Authority Community Room at 4.30 p.m. We need your help. We are asking for you to help us that afternoon by bringing pots of soup or a tray of sandwiches and stick around to help us serve our community. This is always a great time of interacting with our community, and we would love to see you there. We would love to see you be a part of all of these upcoming events. Remember how vital community is for our growth in Christ. We're so glad that you're here today. Take a moment and pray and get ready to meet with God as we worship together. So I lift this up, I lift it up to you.
Hey everyone, it's Jason, and I am so glad that you are here today. Happy New Year! We're going to worship together shortly, but before we do, let me share some announcements with you. We want to make sure that you are aware of some changes with our online giving. We are now exclusively using the Church Center app for online giving. There's an instructional video from Pastor Derek that you can view on how to get that set up at lafayettefirst.life slash why we give. You can also call the church office if you have any questions. We're also now using text to give as a way to give via text message. To get started, all you do is text any dollar amount to 84321 to give. You'll have a quick self-guided setup process that will tie your mobile phone to our church. Then you'll create a donor account and you connect it to a payment source. After that, donating is as easy as sending a text. Mark your calendars to be at Vision Night next Sunday at 5 p.m. Join us for some fun activities and finger foods as we look into the new year to see how God is moving here at Lafayette First. We want to see Lafayette First as a place to call home. And that night, we want your input and feedback as to how we can work together to make it that way. We hope to see you there. We want to let you know that Family Night Supper will resume on Wednesday, January 12th at 5.15 p.m. The cost is $5 per person with a family maximum of $20. And we ask that you make reservations each week so that we know how much food to prepare. On January 23rd, we have a very fun evening planned when we will hold the first annual Annex Games. That's right. Join us in the Annex at 5 p.m. for an evening of friendly competition and fellowship together. It's going to be fun, so make plans to be there. Finally, mark your calendars for Sunday, January 30th, as we will be serving Sunday supper at the Lafayette Housing Authority Community Room at 4.30 p.m. We need your help. We are asking for you to help us that afternoon by bringing pots of soup or a tray of sandwiches and stick around to help us serve our community. This is always a great time of interacting with our community and we would love to see you there. We would love to see you be a part of all of these upcoming events. Remember how vital community is for our growth in Christ. We're so glad that you're here today. Take a moment and pray and get ready to meet with God as we worship together.
Good morning and welcome to Lafayette First Baptist. Let's stand to our feet. Happy New Year. We're so glad that you're here. Let's start it worshiping our Lord together this morning. Worship the King. Let's sing this out together. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above. Oh, gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days. Pavilion in splendor and girded with praise. Oh, tell of His might. Oh, tell of his might, oh, sing of his grace, whose robe is the light and canopy space. His chariots of wrath, the deep thunder clouds form, dark is his path on the wings of the storm. You alone, sing it out. You alone are the matchless king, to you alone be all. Majesty, your oh, glories and wonders, what tongue can recite? You breathe in the air, you shine in the light. Oh, measureless light, ineffable love, while angels delight to worship above. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end. Make a defender, redeemer, and friend. You alone are the matchless king. To you alone be all majesty. Your glories and wonders, what tongue can recite? You breathe in the air, you shine in the light. And wonders what time can recite You breathe in the air You shine in the light You shine in the light You shine in the light Oh, worship the King Oh, worship the King All glorious above Oh, gratefully sing his wonderful love, our shield and defender, the ancient of days, the billion in splendor and girded with praise. Amen. We worship him this morning, right? Our God is good. Let's continue to worship this morning. Our God is powerful and mighty and strong. There's nothing that he can't do, amen? There's nothing our God can't do, amen? There we go. Let's worship him together this morning. Just one word, you call the storm that surrounds me. Just one word, the darkness has to retreat. Just one touch, I feel the presence of heaven. Just one touch, my eyes are open to see, my heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that our God can't do, there's not a mountain that He can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. Just one word, you hear what's broken inside me. Just one word, and you revive every dream. Just one touch, I feel the power of heaven. Just one 
touch My eyes are open to see My heart can't help but believe There's nothing that our God can't do There's not a mountain that He can't move Oh, praise the name that makes a way There's nothing that our God can't do There's nothing that our God can't do There's not a prison wall He can't break through Oh, praise the name that makes a way Let's make this our prayer for 2022. We believe that God still has great things for us. Let's sing. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise. Let all the breathe. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like His power. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a mountain that He can't move. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's nothing that our God can't do. There's not a prison wall we can't break through. Oh, praise the name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can't do. crazy years, didn't we? But think about the beautiful things that happened even in the midst of the trials and tribulations and the difficulties. And I trust that 2022 is going to be even greater, that the Lord is going to be exalted. He's going to work in our life and blessings that we can't even imagine. So thank you for being here. If you're a guest of ours, we want to connect with you and help you get connected to our church. Right in front of you, there's a connect card. Uh, in the pew in front of you. We'd love for you to fill that out. What that will do is initiate a conversation. That's it. A conversation between uh, us and you to help you get connected, to find out information. And uh, we won't bombard you. We just want to bless you. And if you prefer to do that digitally, if you're maybe watching online or even in the room, you can text the word guest to 423-455-9458. And that will also do the exact same thing and initiate the conversation. I want to show you something real quick. I've got some friends that are coming in just a moment because we're going to do, have a, just a holy moment of baby dedication. And we'll do that in just a moment. But I want to show you this. This is our 2022 ministry plan. Some of you got it because I, I was able to come to your Sunday school class this morning. If not, I'm coming next week. So you be ready. Um, and so I wanted to give these out. Uh, inside there are some articles from our staff members as well as some other leaders in our church. And this is truly a ministry plan. What we want to see God do, it's around the theme of a place to call home. We believe that this is not just a building to come into. We are a faith family. A family lives inside a home. 
And we want to reach out to those who, for whatever reason, haven't come back yet after pandemic, which I understand it's still going on. I get it. But we want to invite them back to, be, to remember the home that they're a part of. We also want to connect to other people in our community. Did you know, uh, you may have seen the news, that Roper is going to bring 646 jobs just to Lafayette. So that's going to bring families. There's 500 homes being built uh, very soon just in our immediate area. There are people that don't have a faith family yet and don't have a place to call home. We want to be that place. And so we invite you to come next Sunday night at 5 p.m. We're going to have a night of fun activities where we uh, think about, talk about, and get around this idea of a place to call home There will also be food, okay? So come on out and be great food. And you'll learn some more about that and get involved in that. We're going to celebrate a a holy moment in this moment. And so I'm going to ask the Rudy family and all those who love them and are dear to them, family members and grandparents, to come. And this is our moment of baby dedication, family dedication. Y'all come on, and we're going to just get you right in the middle. So would you welcome them as they come? Thank you, thank you, thank you. We do this from time to time, and I'm so, I love it. I love it because it's not what I hope we understand. It's not just, hey, y'all come up and show us your babies and kids, and we'll ooh and all. That's part of it, and that's good, right? This is truly a, a, a moment of, of a holy moment, a, a, a set apart moment, a moment that's very important, very special in the life of this beautiful family, but also in the life of our faith family, where Ginger and Corey are dedicating themselves and their children to the Lord. And so this is a holy moment, it's an important moment, and we want to be sure to not just go through the motions of this, but to really take a moment and solidify this moment. We've talked a lot about covenant lately uh, through the Advent series. In a way, this is a covenant that you're making before God on the behalf of your family to say, God, we will do whatever we're called to do to raise our kids in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. We know from Psalm 127, verse 3, that children are a gift from God. This is what it says. This is the words of of God in Psalm 127, 3. Children are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a reward from Him. We're told in 1 Samuel 1 that Hannah presented her son Samuel to the Lord. Ginger, Hannah sets an example for moms. You're the heartbeat of the home. Hannah showed Samuel not only her own love, but also God's love. And therefore, ginger moms are to guide the home in love. Guide the home in their love for God and each other. In Luke 2, 22, we understand that Mary and Joseph brought Jesus to the temple in Jerusalem to present him before the Lord. In the same way today, you are here to bring your wonderful children. Can I say these for you? I want to get their whole name. And you'll see why I'm going to read it instead of try to remember it. (laughs) You are bringing today River Inez Marie Rudy, William Leonidas Braxton Rudy, Jason Theophilus Paxton Rudy, James Beauregard Draxton Rudy to the Lord today. And so they bring them, presenting first their own selves, but then also their children to the Lord our God. Corey and Ginger, I call your attention to the commands of God recorded in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 7, where it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. That's for you. And with all your soul and with all your strength, These commandments I give you today are to be upon your hearts. So they first, Corey, have to be on your heart. Ginger, they first have to be on your heart. But then, listen to this. 
These commandments I give to you today are to be upon your hearts, but you're to impress them on the hearts of your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, drive down the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Also, Ephesians 6, 4 gives a particular admission, admonition to dads, Corey. It's our responsibility as dads to guide the spiritual tone of our home. This is what it says. Fathers, do not provoke your children to wrath or to anger. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. God's instructions are plain in Scripture. So mom and dad, grandmoms and momsies and popsies and all your names. I'm sure I don't know them all, so... Love God with every ounce of your fi and fiber of your energy and teach River, Theo, Leo, and Bo to do the same. As you love God and you love one another, you will model before these boys and girls, you will model before them the wonderful love for God and to each one will want for themselves. So Corey and Ginger, by coming forward before God and his people, do you hereby declare your desire to dedicate yourselves and River, Leo, Theo, and Bo to the Lord? If so, please respond by saying we do. We do. So, now Corey and Ginger have prepared something. They've written something for all their children. And so I want to give them an opportunity to share that with this mic right here. To our children, we stand here in front of our church village, declaring our intention to raise you with your gaze toward Christ and proclaiming our request for our church village to assist us in this quest. Our love for you all is beyond anything we could ever imagine. I always say each of you is my heart living outside of my body. If we feel love this strongly, imagine the Lord's love for all of you. He proclaims in his word, you wove me in my mother's womb, and you have been my God from my mother's womb. We have loved you all from the moment we knew you were in my womb, but God has loved you before us. Our prayer is that our home is filled with Christ. We pray for the Lord's love and words would be free flowing in our lives, that it would consume us every minute of every day. We want you to love the Lord with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength, as stated in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. We want you to know him personally. He is constant and faithful. Life will not be easy, but it will be worth it because he is worthy living for. You can go to him for anything and everything. He knows your heart. We pray you search his words and hide them in your heart. His words are living and relevant. They will lead you, lead your steps. We pray you, you are bold in your faith and your light shines brightly for him. As parents, we want the best for our children. We know the best for you all is to follow Christ and give your life to him. We pray for strength and wisdom as we teach you daily. We are not perfect and we will make mistakes, but remember, God will always be there to hold us together. Y'all bear with me. I, I talk on my hands, so it's be difficult. <clears throat> Kids, I'm not well spoken or highly versed in anything, <clears throat> but I have been told that our entire purpose is to glorify and worship God. <clears throat> that is why the good Lord has brought us here, to seek Him out at all times. Once you become a parent, it's like a whole new part of desires and stressors has been unlocked. We want y'all to experience and succeed in everything. We want our kids to be scholars in school, to try every sport possible, explore different foods to cook, be active in church every time the doors are open. We want y'all to become the best versions of yourself. We get caught up in all this and in the rat race of life and forget about our entire purpose of being here. 
Our purpose is to glorify God and to the best of our abilities ensure that it is passed down from us to our children and future generations. Your mom and I, we will try our best to teach you the heart of being a Christian, which is striving our best to be Christ-like and telling others about Jesus. Jesus teaches us to have a heart of forgiveness, to temper our anger, and to bring, things, bring all things to the Lord. He wants us to seek Him out in all things for He is, for he is wisdom and our counselor. We won't be perfect parents, but I will always hold myself accountable to try and be the best role model to y'all that I can be. Your mom and I <clears throat> both have been so fortunate to have had two prior generations before us that were amazing role models. They showed us what is expected, laid out the foundation for us to carry on the torch. That is why y'all's names even though they're long, <coughs> are so important to us. They are names from previous generations. River, I always hope you keep and carry your heart of a steward, wanting to help and be of service to anyone who crosses your path. Leo, I hope you always have your heart of compassion, the sensitivity that you possess to care and love others. Theo, you have the heart of determination, strong will. Nothing will stop you from achieving your goals. Always keep your eyes to the Lord. And Bo, we are so eager to learn and see what God has in store for you, watching you bloom into who you are meant to be. We love you all so much and are so thankful God has entrusted us with y'all. We promise to do our best to raise you as God has intended. <clears throat> that is not an easy to do. Will y'all give them a hand? I love our library ministry, and uh, Carolyn has prepared uh, a gift for each one of you. Is, would you like to say something? You're good. As you've heard me say before, we hope that one day when River walks down the aisle, she'll have the pink Bible incorporated in her bouquet and give it to her husband. The boys, we hope that on their wedding night that they will give the blue Bible to their new wife with love. Church family, as she's handing those out, would you stand if you're able? Because this is not just a holy moment for this family. This is a holy moment for our faith family to take a moment and to dedicate our own selves to assisting this family as they raise these children in the nurture and admonition of Lord, the Lord. That's all of our jobs. And so... You have a responsibility in coming alongside of these, this family to be an encouragement to them and prayer partners with them. God has placed the Rudy family into our faith family, and we too share a responsibility to pray for them and help guide River, Leo, Theo, and Bo. We can do that as children's ministry leaders, as ministers, as church members, and as pastors to them and to Corey and Ginger, you've heard that it takes a village. Well, you are the village. So church family, do you hereby declare that you will be prayerful for and encouraging to this family in the days ahead? If so, please respond by saying, we do. So remain standing. We're going to take a moment just to pray over this family as they dedicate themselves to the Lord. Let's pray. God, we are so thankful, Lord, 
for a family, Lord, that loves you and is loved by you and seeks to dedicate not only themselves as mom and dad, but to dedicate their children, Lord, to be impressing upon their hearts these truths, your love. So we're so thankful for that, God. Would you help them in this endeavor? And would you help us as a church, Lord, to do what we need to do as well? We love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Would you give them a round of applause? And you may be seated, and you may be seated as well. I know you all just sat down, but let's stand together. <laughs> The only way that we're able to help the Rudys, and the only way that we're able to do that for any family <clears throat> is for us to be filled with the Spirit of the Lord. Amen? So let's pray this song together and make it uh, a declaration of what we wish the Lord to do for us. Let's sing together. Let's sing this out together. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. that is the desire of our hearts, that you would fall on us today, and that we would be a people who love you, a people who live for you, a people who are molded by you. We love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. You guys can be seated.
That was epic. I love that. I forgot how epic that was. So uh, today we're going to start a series in the book of Revelation. Now, um, this is a 45-week series. We, we've already set aside 45 weeks. Now, before you just like, are, you know, like, what are you talking about? Uh, we are going to split that up, so it's going to take a while. We're going to give some breaks and some, uh, some uh, we're going to do like five weeks, and then we got another series and some of those things. But we are going to be in the book of Revelation for a while. We want to give adequate time to it. It's not something we want to rush through. And so uh, we uh, are excited about uh, this series called Seven, uh, a study in the book of Revelation. And, uh, and so let me jump in uh, before I just ramble for no reason. So you may ask the question, why study? Why study the book of Revelation? Why, why do a series on that? Why spend 45 weeks? Why care? Why, why should we do that? Well, number one, it's Scripture. It's God's Word. And we need to understand it and know it. Not only that, but it's Scripture about Jesus. So as Jesus followers, we should want to know everything we can know about Jesus in every way that he's been revealed in Scripture. We should want to know these things about our Savior, our Lord, our conquering King. Now, not only that, this is just one, this is number one, but it's Scripture, it's Scripture about Jesus, and it's Scripture about Jesus we don't necessarily see anywhere else in Scripture. Only glimpses. We get to see Jesus in his, all His glory, in the fullness of His glory in the book of Revelation. We see Him in a way we, we can't see Him. If we only study every other book of the Bible, we won't see it the way we see it here. Number two, why study the book of Revelation? Number two, many think aspects of Revelation are happening today. What I mean by this is that we have assumptions and even things that we've been taught to see the things around us assuming that those are in some re uh, way related to or correlate to what is, is prophesied in the book of Revelation. And they may. I'm not saying at this point one way or the other whether they are or not. What I'm saying is that we oftentimes will state or people will state things, oh, we're, this is the end times and this is the book of Revelation coming to fruition and all that. So if that is being stated, if that is being said, let's evaluate, let's look and see if that's true. And so that's being said a lot. There's a lot of things that are of concern to us that many people assume and think could be related to the end times and revelation, which say they certainly could. I'm not making any statement one way or the other, but that's why we study it, so that we can know what it actually says, so that we, we can evaluate what is and is not a part of the book of Revelation. The third thing is that God has been urging me to study and to preach. Revelation. In fact, God has been urging me to do that before I even became your pastor, and I just say no. So, um, and so God has finally said, yes, you will. Well, I hope you know this about me and our team and everything that we do. That we don't do anything just because, of, hey, that sounds fun, let's do it. God leads us to these things. We spend time in prayer. We don't just enter into message series or songs that we sing or um, 2022 ministry plans without having prayerfully considered what it is that God wants us to do. I hope you know that. In fact, I, I don't want you to think I'm a pastor reluctantly. I'm not. But I became a pastor because God called me to it. And oftentimes I question his, if it, uh, are you sure God? Are you, are you sure me? Why would you use me? 
So I didn't get into this thing because I want, like, hey, this, I have all these ideas and people should know my ideas. No, in fact, I'm like, who in the world would want to sit and listen to me week after week? Which don't, I mean, if that's you, please don't leave. Let me stay. But, I mean, I've seriously asked those questions. That's not why I do anything that I do. I do this because I have a strong sense that the Lord has called me to this that he's called me to this book and this passage and, and really every series that we will do this year. God urged me to preach it. And so that's number three reason. But I also think we need to lay some ground rules because the book of Revelation could go in so many different uh, directions. So th let me state what this study is not. Well, this 45-week series over two years is not. This is not an answer key to the book of Revelation, to the biblical code. This is not, this means this, and that means this, and you should, this is this thing exactly. This is not meant to be, let's go dive in and figure out all the secrets and try to know them. People have been debating those for a long time. I'm not smart enough to know all those things, okay? So that's not, it's not an answer key to this mysterious book of Revelation. We will dig deep. We will dig under. But let me just say, there's so much there that 45 weeks is inadequate to get to every minute detail of Revelation. So this is not that. Number two, what well, this is not. I don't know if I will ever in the entire study tell you the exact view that you ought to have of Revelation. Number one, there's a lot, and it's very confusing. Uh, what, what are people's views of the millennia? What's people's view of the tribulation? When will it happen? Pre, post, mid? I don't... We're not going to get into all that. All right? We're not going to... I don't know that I will ever ascribe a certain view to say this is what... We should believe, and, and I should believe, a, a joke among <laughs> ministers oftentimes, and it's been my go-to for a long time because people will ask you those things, and honestly, I don't know, and so I just say, well, I'm a, I'm a pan-millennialist, right? You probably have heard that. It's all going to pan out in the end, so that's, that's where I'm at. So, thank you. I love, I love That's twice you've, ju you've laughed at my jokes, and it's only the introduction. I love it. So I don't know that we're going to get into you should think, think of this specific thing, that specific thing. I'll share with you in a moment why. Number three, what this is not. This is not meant to cause division. It's not meant to cause division. And you may think, well, well sure, I mean, why would it cause division? I, listen, I was in a meeting recently with some other pastors from our area uh, 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 from time to time we'll get asked to speak or I'll go to uh, the association of Baptist churches in our area and one brother he says hey brother what you going to preach on soon and I said well this was before the Advent series I said well we're going to do an Advent series I explained it through the books of the covenant yeah that's great I said well and then I'm gonna, I think I hadn't decided fully then we'd kind of flesh it out but I hadn't decided fully because this is a big undertaking, I think. But I said, I think I'm going to preach through Revelation. And they said, whoa, you know, like, are you serious? And I was like, well, I don't know. That's why I said I think. And uh, you know what happened immediately? And it was, it was playful, somewhat playful banter between brothers in Christ. But in that moment, it became, it became an argument. Like, like that, of... This guy thought this specific way. This guy held this specific view. And there's me and this other guy that are like, oh, wow, you know, he had already experienced before. I had never experienced it. And I'm like, maybe I should rethink preaching through the book of Revelation. So uh, the Lord still impressed it upon my heart. So this is not meant to cause division. And I don't think it will. So the third question. So we asked the question, why study Revelation Two, what, is, what this study is not. Three, why do we, why do you and me, 2022, why do we need this? Why do we need this study? I hope that John really answers all these in the first eight verses. So I hope 
to answer that by reading these first eight verses. But I want you to know this. Essentially, it all comes down to Jesus. It all comes down to our Savior. It all comes down to our King. It all comes down to Jesus. Why do we need this? Because we need Jesus. Why do we need the book of Revelation to study it? Because we need to understand who Jesus was, is, and who He is to come. We need Jesus. And we need Him in every possible way that we can receive Him. In every way that He reveals Himself in Scripture, we need Jesus. And so I believe this really comes down to one thing and one primary thing alone. You and I need Jesus. And so I hope that is what we will see in this study. Would you join me, if you're able, by standing to read the Word of the Lord? And as we've been doing and have begun to make our practice, when I finish reading, I'll say, this is the Word of the Lord. If you would say, thanks be to God. And don't just say it like, I mean, this is like, thank you, God. We so thank, let's soak this up. This is His Word. The revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave Him to show His servants what must soon take place. He made it known by sending His angel to His servant John, who testified to the Word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, whatever He saw. Blessed is the one who reads aloud the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who hear the words of this prophecy and keep what's written in it. Because the time is near. John, to the seven churches in Asia, grace and peace to you from the one who is, who was, and who is to come, and from the seven spirits from before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has set us free from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn over him, so it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. So, why do we need this? Number one, and first point, this is Jesus' revelation. This is Jesus' revelation. This is Jesus' vision of Himself, revelation of Himself, unveiling of Himself, uh, the appearing of Himself. Look at what it says. The revelation of Jesus Christ. What does that word revelation mean? Well, it's the Greek word apocalypsis, right? So that's where we get the word apocalypse from, right? Well, apocalypse, we think... <laughs> We, you know, we, we think about apocalyptical theory, uh, uh, um, th uh, thrillers like movies and stuff. And so it's like the end of the world, right? Well, that's not even what the, world, the word apocalypse means. The word apocalypse means unveiling. In fact, Peter in 1 Peter 7 uses the exact same word, which is translated appearing. Appearing. So he uses the same word, apocalypsis, and so it, he, it means appearing or unveiling. So this is Jesus' unveiling, the appearing of Him in all of His glory. This is a picture of Jesus in, in His majesty for us to see. Now, notice it says the revelation of Jesus Christ that God gave Him to show his servants what must soon take place. So we, have, we see God gave this to Jesus. Jesus gave it to the angel. Angel gave it to John. And John gives it to the churches. 
John, let's talk about him for a moment. Who is he? And what we see is that it's, it's debated. But what we understand and see from, from history and from knowing what took place, yeah, John didn't give a great distinction of who he was. He didn't say John the Apostle, John the servant of Jesus, John the one whom Jesus loved. He didn't do any of that. Why? Because when people read this, the churches that received this letter saw that it was addressed by John about Jesus. So it's not about John. And so John didn't say, hey, it's me, John, again. No, they knew who it was. They knew it was because they had a relationship with him. They had a relationship with him because it was the apostle John. It was John who followed Jesus. It was one of the 12 disciples. It was John. John wrote everything down. That's what he's saying here. He's saying, listen, God gave this to Jesus. Jesus gave it to the angel. The angel gave it to me. And I feverishly wrote it down. It says, uh, he made it known by sending his angel to his servant John, verse 2, who testified to the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ, whatever he saw. So he's like, this is crazy. I don't, you know, I'm, I'm writing down every single detail. John laid out everything Jesus said. This is Jesus' revealing. This is Jesus' unveiling. This is Jesus' appearing. And John sought to write it down so that it could be delivered to the churches. So this is a letter to churches who needed to know something about Jesus that they didn't yet know or understand fully. This letter that is apocalyptical it's an unveiling it's a revealing and it's also a prophecy this book this revelation is by Jesus about Jesus for Jesus to Jesus for our benefit for our benefit it is not primarily about the mark of the beast the antichrist the signs and wonders all those things are in here, and we'll get to those eventually. But this is primarily about Jesus. It is a book that should benefit you today in your understanding of who he is so that your life today can be impacted by this amazing Lord and Savior that we have. It's not just the first three chapters, because oftentimes that's what happens. The first three chapters, oh yeah, well that's about Jesus, all right. But then it starts getting weird, and that's about all those other things. No, this is all about Jesus. All of it is about Him. The second thing that John shows us that answers the question, why do we need this, is the revelation is a blessing. Do you see that? He talked about how it should bless us Blessed is the one who reads it aloud. Blessed are those who hear the words of this prophecy. And blessed are those who keep the prophecy. We're, we're triply blessed by reading it. Many today expect the book of Revelation to kind of be somewhat of a curse. And what I mean by that, it's like... That's what it's about. It's about how the world is cursed. It's about how anyone apart from Christ will be cursed. It, it, it's, it's just a, it's, it's a, a daunting task, a, a hard thought and hard understanding to read this book and not come to kind of this interesting conclusion. But John says it's not meant to be viewed that way. It's meant to be viewed as something that blesses us, something that we need. John says it's a, a blessing and that we're blessed when we read it aloud, blessed when we hear it, and blessed when we keep it. Receiving the full blessing of the book of Revelation requires our obedience to who? The one who reveals it, Jesus. The way we receive the blessing is through our obedience to Jesus and the one who revealed himself. You'll notice at the end of that section, it says, blessed is the one who keeps it because the time is near. This is mentioned seven times throughout the entire book. 
And it's important that the revelation is kept because our time is limited. And I would say that's true. People say, well, we're in the end times. Yeah, we are in the end times. We've been in the end times since Jesus went to heaven. That's what he said. I'm, the end times are here. The last days are here. He said that again and again and again and again. Yeah, we're in the end times. Yes, the time is imminent for the return of Christ. Jesus will come back, and it will be sooner than what we anticipate or can even imagine. The time is near. It's important that we understand it, re receive it, are obedient to it, and that we believe in Jesus today, today. It's important that we're obedient to Jesus and believe in him right now. Why? The time's near. The time is near. The third question that, or the third thing that John says that answers the question, why do we need the book of Revelation, is that this was revealed to seven specific churches. This was a revelation that was given to specific people who lived in a specific place with a specific message for them for that day that would impact their lives then. Each church that is mentioned here was a real church, a real body of believers that John had charge over. Each church was a church Jesus dearly loved and had this very timely, important, dire message for them that it needed to be delivered. It was a specific church for a specific time with a specific message. Now, one of the things that's debated is when was it written? When was the church written to about this? I don't know. There's a couple of different dates that you could go to. And really, the date really does matter because it, it kind of defend, it def, it, it defends what you think about when this might have happened. Some believe some of these things already took place. Some believe they are things to come. I don't know. If it's written in about 65 AD, that kind of changes things. It may mean that some of this happened with the fall of Jerusalem. I don't know. Again, remember what I said at the beginning. I don't know that I will ascribe a certain view of any of it because that's not the point of what we need to deal with. What we need to deal with is what does it mean for today for me about Jesus and how it will affect me in the future. That does matter as well. So I don't know the date, and I don't know that I'm at a place where I can say, oh, I think it was this one, or I think it was that one. I don't know. I have one that I was taught all my life, which is the later date, in about 90 A.D. But I don't know. And I just think you should know that. I don't know. I've studied this stuff. I went to seminary. I took a class on it. I don't know. So, but it's about Jesus, I will tell you that. But it was, a, it was to bless them, that those churches, it was to bless them whenever it was written to them. So what happens, and this is why this is important, what happens in the book of Revelation, we jump, we jump into what does this mean for the future? What does this mean for the future? But we forget to realize that our interpretation should look like how we interpret any other scripture. And when we interpret any other scripture, we first start with the audience that it was written to in the day that it was written to for the purpose it was written at that time. The purpose it was written for in that moment was to reveal to them something that they needed to hear because they were in tribulation, in trial, in difficulty, and they needed to be encouraged by their Savior who loved them. That's the purpose of what it was written for. That's important. That's what is more important than saying, well, it was written at this exact time and date. If they didn't ascribe that date to it, then maybe it, maybe we, and that's why it shouldn't meant, be meant to cause division. Which we can talk about this and discuss it. I'm, I'm for that. I, in one-on-one, -on -one, I can tell you, oh, I don't know, maybe. I'm kind of thinking of this. I have no, but again, I don't know. And we, we've even thought about, as we go into some of the deeper things, and like some of what does this mean, what are the trumpets, and what's this, and the scrolls, and what's this, to have some Sunday nights where we have town hall meetings, so you can ask those questions. And we can probably just say, I don't know. Uh, but also say, well, it might could be this, it could be that. We don't know. So, 
But we will have those coming out as it goes, okay? But at the end of the day, it was to bless these people. It was to give them um, a specific information for a specific time. The book of Revelation is unique because it, it has three structures, right? It's a letter. It's a letter written to seven churches. It's an apocalypse. It's an unveiling. But it's also a prophecy. And so that's why it can be challenging to interpret and understand. One of the things that uh, I learned in seminary was hermeneutical approach. Hermeneutics means just interpretation, like how you figure out what Scripture means. You don't need to know the word hermeneutics. You can forget that if you want to because you might because it's kind of a weird word and one you probably haven't heard a lot. But what you learn is that you, any Scripture, you go to the historical context first. You start with where it was written, how it was written to... So the way my class that I took in seminary said, you go to their town. You go to the biblical town. You go to their town. What was it written for the day it was written? You determine all the things that separate you from today. And that's like, uh, is it Old Testament or is it, new, or is it Old Covenant or New Covenant? What's the language? What was it written in? Who was it written to? Uh, Culture. All those things. That's the span of the sea that kind of separates you from their town. And so what you do is you come and find a, a biblical principle in their town that you can build a bridge with. So you don't have to wade through all the stuff to get across the great span. You build a bridge. It's called the principalizing bridge. Theologians are a little dry, right? So they come up with weird things. But it's the principalizing bridge so that you can understand what needs to be said and taught and understand in your town, right? So that's what I'm seeking to do. What benefit does this have for us today? This was written to specific churches for a specific purpose that were dealing with real tribulations, needing real encouragement to continue on to face the trials. You know what? That's something you and I can benefit from today, can't we? You and I face trials, tribulations, right? We, we, we experience things in our world where there's some days we don't know if our religious freedom might be taken away, right? Those, those things are, are real things that we deal with. Thankfully, here lately, we've had some pretty good wins in the Supreme Court for... for uh, uh, for faith and belief and um, freedom of religion. So, but we don't know. So we face trials and tribulations in our day. And you and I need Jesus to encourage us, to help us to see that. So that's a principle that we can carry over, isn't it? So that we can see for today that Jesus is the source of my joy, of my love. Jesus is the source of encouragement and blessing, even in the midst of the greatest trials. How do I know this is written, and all of it is written to the entire, these seven churches? Because John says that. Jesus says to John in Revelation 22, 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to attest to these things to you for the churches. I'm able to root, I am the root and descendant of David, the bright morning star. This was written, the entire thing, from Revelation 1 to Revelation 22. Jesus is the point of this, and it was written to the churches. I got two more points. I'm going to go real quick. Jesus' covenant love should encourage us. John helps us to see that the covenant love Jesus has with us should encourage us. We've talked about covenant a lot. We've talked about the loyal, faithful love of Jesus for you and me. We talked about that through a whole series, five-week series. If you're just catching up and you're here for the first time, you can watch those on our website. I encourage you to do lafayettefirst.life slash watch. And you can check out those there. Because covenant love is very important. It's very helpful. We see this covenant language in this first chapter right away. John, verse 4 and following to the seven churches in Asia, grace and peace to you from the one who was, who was, who is, who was, who is to come, and to the seven spirits before us thrown, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, 
and the rule of the kings of earth to him who loves us and has set us free from our sins, what? By his sacrificial blood and made us a kingdom priest. We talked about that. We talked about how the kingdom and priests that you and I are, are we are his covenant representatives in our world. We are a kingdom of priests to God and the Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So, Jesus, through John, reminds us of his place as God's covenant mediator. He's the one who stands on our behalf between God and us and us and the world. Jesus is the covenant mediator reflecting the image of his Father in sonship, it says he is the firstborn, right? So we see that he shows us his kindness through faithful love as you and I are a kingdom and priests. This is the language of covenant God establishes throughout the entire Scripture. To, and this was to help us to see that we are in a covenant relationship with him by his sacrificial blood. And this was an encouragement for these churches to see. Yeah, you're facing trials. Yes, you're facing difficulties, but I love you. I'm with you. I'll never leave you. I'm, I'm stronger than this. I'm above this. I'm victorious over this. You see, Jesus loves us, and that should encourage us. The one, two, three, four, fifth point. Jesus reveals himself in glory and majesty. Look, he's coming with the clouds. We get a glimpse. I'm the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord. I'm the one who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. John, through Jesus' message to him, shows us a glimpse of who Jesus is and how he will begin to reveal himself to us. And next week, hold on to your seat because it goes full force into this beautiful glorious image of who Jesus is. But he begins here in this moment that he is the first and the last. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Everything begins and ends with him. He was, he is, he is to come. This is Jesus in all of his glory. In all of his glory. So, Jesus shows himself in revelation. And this revelation is a specific message about Jesus given first to a specific group of Christians who were dealing with persecution that needed to know that in the end, Jesus is the authority. He wins. He is victorious. And he has all things grasped in his hands, fully capable, fully holding it all together. Now, this benefits you and me today because we are blessed, we are encouraged, and we are in awe of this Jesus, trusting that in our lives, He holds all things together and He is victorious. That's what this series is all about. That's what Jesus is all about, to let you know that He is in control and you can trust him because he loves you that's a message I'm excited to dig down into and see in the midst of somewhat of a controversial book I want to see Jesus and I hope you do too today if you want to trust Jesus today's the day you can do that I pray that you would I pray you would trust him today he's capable He's over all things. And He shows us His love. Jesus demonstrated His love by becoming a curse for you. By dying on the cross for you. His blood was spilled for you. Would you trust Him? Would you believe Him today? I'd love to share with you how to do that. You can text the word ALIVE to 423-455-9458. I'd love it. You just came up front. I'd love to share with you and show you how to walk in Jesus, to love him, to trust him, and to follow him. You can do that today. Don't hesitate. But I pray that all of us would help, would be enamored with this Jesus who loves us and has revealed himself to us so that we can be blessed 
and encouraged. Would you stand with me? Would you pray with me? And if God is moving your heart, you come after we pray and the song begins. Lord, we love you. We praise you. Thank you for revealing yourself in all your glory. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Help us to begin to see you in your glory and to honor you and glorify you with our lives, to walk with you, to trust you, to follow you, to live for you, to be blessed by you, to be encouraged by you. Lord, we need encouragement. We need you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's sing these words together. Oh, soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the same.
today, right? We look to Jesus, and the things of this earth grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. We get an incredible picture of that in the book of Revelation. There's a couple of things I want to remind you about. Um, number one, Happy New Year, everyone. It's 2022. Hopefully that brings a smile to your face. The whole year is set before us. Let's use it to glorify the Lord. Amen? Number two, uh, hopefully you are aware now of the fact that we've made some changes in the way that we uh, can give online. We use the text to, or we use the um, the church center app in order to uh, give online, or we have a new text to give feature. You can text any dollar amount to the number eight four three two one. Eight four three two one is the new number to text to give. You text any dollar amount, and it'll start a little. Um, process for you to connect, create an account so that you can give. Uh, and then after that, it's as simple as sending a text, a dollar amount that, that you can text to. So if you'd like to give that way, if you gave that way in the past, you, you need to text a different number now. Because if you text that old number, I don't know where that goes to. It doesn't come to us anymore, okay? So text 84321 is how you text to give now. Um, this is a clean slate. It's January the 2nd. We have a clean slate. You have the opportunity this week to go and share this Jesus that we talked about this morning with people that you come into contact with. Let's use the opportunity to glorify our Lord and to draw people closer to him. Amen? Amen. You are sent out into the world. Amen.